KCIM Sports presents the Pizza Ranch Saturday Morning Coaches Show with Sports Director Jeff Blankman. Thank you very much, John. Good morning, everybody. Welcome here to the Pizza Ranch at Coaches Show. We've got a busy one. Nine coaches to get to today. Randy Beeson, Shane Vaughn, Katie Cook, Deb Danner, Andrew Klink, Eric Noggle, Tracy Hoffman, Sam Vanami, and Sean Minahan. All scheduled to join us this morning. We're going to run you through the team stuff from last night. And again, recap stories with results from all the last night's sporting events are available on the Brinks Exterior Sports Report at sports.1380kcim.com. Also on the CB Sports Network Facebook page and Twitter page as well. We'll start with the wrestling. Kemper boys went up to the Humboldt invite last night, uh, finished up in fifth place with 163 points. They did have five individuals to finish in the top three. Boys basketball scores from last night. Arweva edges West Harrison in overtime at 62 to 61. Audubon falls to Tri Center 72 to 52. It was Carroll over Gilbert 82 to 76. Elsewhere in boys basketball, Coonabins Bear knocks off a Caminita 56 to 48. It was Glidden Ralston downing Peyton Chardin 64 to 35. It was Eastack County over South Central Calhoun 63 to 46. And rounding out the boys basketball scores, it was I.K. Manning falling to Riverside by a final of 57 to 52. Over on the girls' side of things, Carroll loses a heartbreaker, losing to Gilbert 49 to 48. Coon Rabbits Baird matchup of ranked teams. They absolutely rout Caminita 43 to 22, held them to four points in the entire first half. Eastack County knocks off South Central Calhoun 44 to 36. It was Glidden Ralston downing Peyton Chardin 57 to 20. Other girls basketball scores, I came in losing last night on the road at Riverside 51 to 18 and our Weave put together a pretty good offensive performance but they lose to West Harrison 62 to 44. And again we'll be back Randy Beeson set to join us next right here on the Pizza Ranch Coach Show. Here at Pizza Ranch, we love our basketball, just like you love everyone's favorite buffet. Hot, fresh pizza, the country's best chicken, fresh, cool salad bar, and dessert options that are so good, it's like sinking the winning shot at the buzzer. Pizza Ranch is a perfect meal option every day of the week. And to make it even sweeter, we have extended hours every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Whoa, that's good. Pizza Ranch, located just off Highway 30 in Carroll, open seven days a week. Randy Beeson, the head boys basketball coach, of course, with the Carroll Tigers joining us here as we start off this Pizza Ranch Coaches Show on this Saturday morning. Tigers picking up a big win to move to 2-0 and on the season last night. Randy, appreciate you joining us. Congratulations on the start of the year. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate it. You bet. We'll bounce back to that uh, overtime win over uh, Kemper uh, coming up here just a, a couple of minutes, Coach. But uh, uh, you guys must like giving the fans, uh, you know, some exciting finishes. Uh, an 82-76 victory last night against uh, Gilbert. Uh, sounds like you kind of controlled the game a little bit. I uh, just couldn't quite put them away, but uh, get another nice win. Yeah, we're we're trying to pack the stands. So I figure if we can make games exciting and get more fans there, and uh, just be fun for everybody. So, uh, <laughs> you know, uh, it, it was a pretty exciting game last night. Uh, both teams getting out and running and and uh, scoring a lot of points. Eighty-two, seventy-six is the final score, and uh, it was back and forth the whole way. Uh, it was close. We we got up maybe ten, eleven points uh, in the first half. They did a good job of uh, closing out the second quarter, and I think we were leading by seven going into halftime. And uh, of course, they scored the first couple baskets. Uh, and I think they went on a, about a ten to two run because they took the lead, thirty-eight, uh, thirty-seven, a couple minutes into the third quarter. Uh, and so then it was back and forth. From there, I think we took the lead again. I uh, got up uh, by three or four, but uh, we lost the lead again about halfway through the fourth quarter, and. Give our guys credit. They uh, battled hard and found a way to, to make a couple plays down the stretch and get the win. And Coach, and you were telling me, too, that uh, you guys had to do this with a little bit of a different lineup, a couple of guys out tonight. Um, so a lot of guys stepped up in different roles. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, we, we talk a lot about, you know, everyone's a part of the team and it takes everybody and everybody's got a role. And, uh, you know, we got a lot of solid basketball players. And, uh without a couple of our, our starting guys uh, and we had a 
a bunch of guys stepped up. Will Schultes uh, started the game for us. Matt Callison started the game. At the point, I don't think Matt came out of the game. Uh, you know, he's just a sophomore, so he's learning. But uh, to take control and, and be the point guard uh, on our team and, and play the whole game, uh, you know, there's a few mistakes in there, but he did such a good job defensively, and he made the right plays down the stretch. And uh, Will Schultes had a big three late in the game uh, to get us ahead. Uh, so those guys did a really nice job, but uh, a couple other guys that you know struggled a little bit the first game of the year had really nice games. Caden Langling scored 25 for us last night, uh, hit some threes, made a bunch of free throws, uh, just had a really nice game. Attacked the basket uh, off their press. Peyton Wardell uh, was outstanding as well, uh, finding a way to get to the basket and finish around the basket and up fouling on out late in the game. He was guarding one of their better players, so he was all over the place, like always. And Evan Hammer was outstanding, like always. Uh, we needed him to to get going uh, there in the fourth quarter and take over the game and had eight points in the fourth quarter and, and made some big shots. And He got himself in a little bit of foul trouble early on uh, and was able to uh, play with the two fouls, and I think that's uh, all the fouls he ended up having for the whole game. So <laughs> Uh, but once again, I mean, we had three guys in double figures, uh, a couple of those other guys, uh, off the bench, uh, you know, Carter Essek, uh, Noah Henners, Blake Molenski got in the game, uh, and did some nice things too. So, uh, it, it takes a, it takes a team effort every night. You never know when it's, when it's your turn and when you're going to be called on. And I, I love the fact that the guys came in and, and played hard and we competed till the end. And coach, uh, you got to love starting one and zero in the conference, but you're two and zero overall. You guys coming off a a great overtime win Tuesday night uh, against a good Kemper ball club. Uh, as we flash back to that game on Tuesday, uh, Evan Hammer hits that uh, kind of fade away, falling down jumper off the glass at the horn to give you the one point win. I know you've went back and studied the film. What did you take away, you know, as you rewatched the game that maybe uh, you know you don't always get to see while, while you're in the heat of the moment. Uh, yeah, I mean, it was, it was crazy. It was back and forth, you know, uh, basketball, the game of runs and we got hot early on and made some shots. And, uh, then all of a sudden we turned it over too much. Uh, defensively, we were pretty good. Most of the game, uh, uh, we just had too many turnovers and those turnovers led to easy ones in transition and, uh, got us in trouble a little bit, but once again, guys competed, you know, <laughs> that type of environment and atmosphere uh, for the first game for a team that hasn't played a lot of basketball together and hasn't been on that stage. So just was super proud of the guys of, of finding a way uh, to finish the game. And what a fun rivalry uh, back and forth. You know, it's uh, these kids know each other so well and, uh, and they're, they're just, it's fun to watch them compete. Uh, they're, they're talking to each other in a nice way the, the entire game and, Luckily, we were on the, the right end at the end. Uh, Evan Hammer made a huge play and, and made a big basket, and uh, that was a fun way to start the year. Randy, you mentioned the hot start. I kind of said it during the broadcast that night uh, with Todd Danner helping me. I said, you know, I said, Todd, sometimes when when, when everything's going well for a team early, it's it's hard to, to keep that, and then it's kind of how the team responds when things start not going as, as easy and as well. And, and you guys, I thought, got off to that great shooting start. Then the shots kind of started to not fall. Uh, Kemper made a run. But I, I think you got to be happy with the way your guys responded. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we got up 10-2 to 2 early on. Uh, so played some really good defense, held them to two points uh, in the first four minutes and uh, forced a bunch of jumpers and got that first rebound, which is good. And, and all of a sudden, second quarter, we played some pretty good defense for the first three or four minutes. But then uh, we didn't score for the last three or four minutes of the quarter. So uh, a couple turnovers led to some easy ones, and all of a sudden it's a pretty tight game. And uh, they came out in the third quarter and, and made some shots early on and took the lead. And uh, then all of a sudden we held them for to two or three points there for three or four minutes, and we got some shots that, to fall. You know, so it was just kind of a game of runs back and forth. And, uh, you know, the, the last four Five minutes of the fourth quarter, it's a tie ball game back and forth. Neither team scored, and all of a sudden you get the two point lead, and you're thinking, man, uh, we got a chance here. We just got to get another basket to get it to four, make it a two possession game, and a couple turnovers here. Uh, luckily, we got a couple more stops, and uh, you know, Catch Brower hit a hit a big shot in the regulation, and 
uh, we found a way to get to overtime. Evan Hammer was, was hurting, was cramping up, and and uh, we got up two there late in the game, and you could barely walk back to play defense. But uh, he found a way to battle it out, and, uh, you know, at the end of the game, you want to put the ball in your best player's hands and see what he can do. So uh made a big shot, and uh, it, was a, it was a fun one. <laughs> Coach, now you at least get a weekend off to kind of recover from those two games a little bit and catch your breath. But uh, back in action Tuesday, you got North Polk coming in. This has been a team that uh, I don't know if he's graduated. They've had a really, really good player on a really good team down there for the last few years. But uh, what do they look like this year? Yeah, I mean, they made it state last year. Uh, they're really good defensively. Luckily, they they lost three or four of their guys. They got the possible kid back. Uh they got another kid that made, I think, five or six threes uh, in their first game. Uh, they beat a, a really good Pella team first game. So I have a feeling uh, they're going to be really good. They're always well coached and really good defensively. So, uh, you know, we've we've had a chance to win a couple of our first games and, and have, have found a way to battle and a lot of mistakes and a lot of learning going on. But we're just trying to get a little bit better each game. So, uh, you know, uh, we'll... We'll keep getting better. Uh, you know, I, I forgot to mention Ryan North as another guy that uh, played well for us last night. He came in, took a big charge. Uh, so uh, these guys are all they're, they're all learning. They're all learning uh, every day of practice and every game. And we're just going to continue to try to be a little bit better. And the nice thing is we start off the year with four straight home games. So uh, we, we get to play at home again on Tuesday and, and home again uh, the following game uh, against Storm Lake on a Saturday. So... We're going to enjoy these home games, and uh, we'll keep trying to pack the gym because those games are fun and, and put on a good show. Hopefully one of these games will be a little more relaxing, but if we have to grind it out and our guys compete and find a way to win at the end, we'll take that too. So uh, we'll just keep keep trying to get better. Well, Coach, congrats again on the 2-0 and start. We'll have Casey out there, Casey Miners, on Tuesday. I'll be there on Saturday for that Storm Light game. So looking forward to covering you guys again coming up both games next week. So congrats. Appreciate you joining us here today. Yeah, thanks, Jeff. Appreciate the coverage, like always. Head coach Randy Beeson again with the Carroll Boys basketball team. will step away. We're going to take a break. We'll be back. We're going to talk Kemper Boys wrestling. Head coach Shane Vaughn said to join us next. Prescriptions require an online consultation with a healthcare provider who will determine if appropriate restrictions apply. See website for details and important safety information. Subscription required. Price varies based on product and subscription plan. Hey guys, did you know there's a generic form of Viagra that works just the same, but is 95% cheaper and you can get it online? Go to hymns.com slash joy. Through hymns, you'll get a free medical consultation, discreet shipping if prescribed, and the process is 100% online. To start your free online visit, go to hymns.com slash joy. That's H-I-M-S dot com slash J-O. We're going abroad for the first time in years. To Spain. So we started using Babbel. And started learning Spanish fast. With Babbel, you can start having conversations in another language in just three weeks. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? When you learn a language, you want to actually use it. Babbel is designed with that goal in mind. In just three weeks, we're starting to have conversations in Spanish. Gracias, Babbel. Babbel, language for life. Now try Babbel for free at Babbel.com. That's B-A-B-B-E-L.com. We're back here at the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show talking at Kemper Boys Wrestling right now as head coach Shane Vaughn joining us on this Saturday morning. The Knights headed up to Humboldt for the Joe Fitch invite and had a very strong showing last night. Coach, it's always good to catch up with you. Yeah, good to be here. You bet. Appreciate you getting up early this morning after getting back late last night. I know you guys rolled in about 11.15 or so last night, uh, but uh, a fifth-place finish uh, scored 163 points, had five different wrestlers out of your 11 uh, finish up uh, in the top three. So I, I, overall, you're pretty pleased with the way the first uh, meet of the year went? Yeah, not bad. Um, you know, we knew coming in team-wise with three open weights would be a little tough, but we had a goal set of being top four, um, and finished just outside of that. But you know, just a couple of matches, one way or another, and we were we were right there. So, not not a bad showing overall, especially first time out of the year. What was uh, the biggest thing you took away from from last night? Uh, I mean, you know, just a lot of a lot of little things we got to clean up. Um, shot finishes, more work on bottom, a little bit of kind of match situation awareness, things like that that we got to improve on, but. I was pretty happy with how uh, aggressive we looked early on in matches. 
Now, I know you and I were chatting during the commercial break. You said you had a few shots that, that didn't get in and, and it ended up costing you guys. But sounds like even though you don't want to see that, you got to work on that and you know that now. But uh, um, happy the way it sounds with how aggressive the guys were in trying to get in there. Yeah, you know, we talked about it early in the season, um, trying to get out and let it fly. And I aggressive mistakes I can work with. You know, guys that guys that sit back and wrestle tentative, it's kind of hard to deal with, especially early on. But guys that are willing to go out there and let it fly, you can just work on cleaning up and kind of fine-tuning those details, and that's really fun to see. Jake Earl back a champion for you last night at 157, uh, finished 3-0 uh, and on the night. Uh, won his championship match by decision 5 to nothing uh, against the summer lot kid Ryan from uh, Pocahontas area. How did he go out and wrestle? Jake looked tough. I mean, he looked... He looks smart on the mat. Um, he's really situationally aware, very kind of calm and poised, and you know went out and was just efficient with his attacks. Anything surprise you with the way he looked, or or was that kind of what you anticipated from him? No, I mean Jake. You know he's a good tough wrestler. He's an intelligent wrestler, so I knew he'd be looking good. Um, you know, anytime you have someone that misses quite a bit of time, as he did coming back from an injury, you kind of wonder, you know, where they're going to be at right away. And I knew he could get there and. He's looking pretty solid already, so happy to see that. Emmitsburg usually pretty strong. He beat the Yates kid in the semis 4-2. to two. Uh, How did he come through there? Just a tough, grinded-out match. Um, you know, a couple, couple good leg attacks and solid riding and just, you know, didn't force anything, didn't make any dumb mistakes and was able to win a tight one over a pretty solid kid. Tate Barrett and uh, Owen Neppel both finishing up in second for, place for you. Um, or, excuse me, Bryce Wiskus. Uh, what jumped out for you on, on how both Bryce and, and also Owen wrestled? You know, they both uh, they both had good tempo, um, especially early on in the day. But Owen was hitting his shots pretty quick and looking good there. And, you know, again, we got to tweak a few things with our finishes. But he's looking good so far. Um, you know, always room to improve. But he, he wrestled confident. And so that confidence is good to see, um, especially coming off, you know, the way his season ended last year, how he's got a lot to be confident in. And so to carry that over is pretty good for him, and he had a pretty solid night. Um, you know, same thing with Bryce. Bryce had a really good football season. He had a good end of his wrestling season last year, so he's carrying a lot of confidence right now. And he was in a tight match in the finals and made a mistake, and it cost him. But, you know, that's when I'd love to see go a full six minutes because it was a lot of fun wrestling prior to that fall happening. I mentioned Tate Barrett. He did finish in third, dropped his opening match, but then came back. And I think you got to be happy with the fact that he came back to win his next three, including winning by fall in that third-place match. And then Caleb Hoffman also uh, bringing home a third-place finish for you. How would those two guys look? Yeah, they look solid, too. Um, you know, Tate's, Tate's getting tougher and tougher every day. Um, ran into a stud round one, and that was pretty tough, but... You know, we were scrapping with him and kind of got caught up in a situation that we didn't, you know, didn't need to put ourselves in. And, you know, something to learn from and something to grow from. Um, but he looked good the rest of the day. He shook it off and bounced back. And in the third place match, it was actually a, it was a lot tougher than you'd think looking at the score. And, you know, he just kind of calm and patient and found his opportunities and took advantage of them. Um, so that was really good to see out of Tate. And, you know, same thing with Owen. Owen was firing off attacks. He was riding tough. Um, you know, even his loss is to grow from and it was a good competitive match so yeah pretty happy with his effort as well anybody else that didn't maybe finish top three really jump off the board at you and, and maybe go out and do some things against some really good competition that uh, made you pretty pleased um mcguire hoyt looked pretty good um you know he's a guy that you know just kind of like we talked about earlier with you guys just getting better and better every time out um and we're early in the season but you look at where he was end of last year even to now He's come a long ways, and he had a good tournament um, coming in fifth, but in his losses, there was stuff to take away from, so I'm excited to see what he's capable of the rest of the way. Um, Jake Smith and Joe Pine both had some pretty good moments in there as well. Kent Sanders had some good moments. Um, you know, just guys that are getting out and finding ways to, you know, figure out where they want to be and how to put themselves there, so a lot of good things. Coach, you guys off to today, uh, being you wrestled last night, but uh, back to action Tuesday down at uh, Shenandoah. Uh, what are you looking at with the invite down there? It'll be the first time our whole team travels together. Um, varsity and JV guys, everyone getting there, getting matches in together. So that'll be kind of cool to see. Um, you know, JV hasn't gotten to compete yet this year, so getting those guys some mat time will be awesome for them. Um, you know, it should be a pretty, pretty competitive night, and so I'm looking forward to our first duels of the year. 
Well, Coach, I tell you what, appreciate you joining us here, getting up early after being on the road late last night. Uh, appreciate you joining us again. Congrats on a good start to the season. Best of luck coming up on Tuesday. Looking forward to catching up with you again next week. Yeah, thank you very much. You bet. Head coach is Shane Vaughn again with the Kemper Boys Wrestling Team. We'll snap away, take a break. We're going to flip back over to basketball. Katie Cook, Carroll Girls Basketball Coach, is set to join us next here on the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show. Here at Pizza Ranch, we love our basketball. Just like you love everyone's favorite buffet. Hot, fresh pizza, the country's best chicken, fresh, cool salad bar, and dessert options that are so good, it's like sinking the winning shot at the buzzer. Pizza Ranch is a perfect meal option every day of the week. And to make it even sweeter, we have extended hours every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Whoa, that's good. Pizza Ranch, located just off Highway 30 in Carroll. Open seven days a week. Back here at the Pizza Ranch Head Coaches Show on 1380 AM, 95.1 FM, KCM. Jeff Blankman joined right now by Carol Tiger, Head Girls Basketball Coach Katie Cook. And Katie, uh, good to catch up with you on this Saturday morning. Oh, always, Jeff. Katie, I, I, man, it was such a good week going. You guys picked up a, a hard-fought overtime win on Tuesday. We'll talk about that here in a moment. But uh, really good performance the way it sounds last night, uh, but came up uh, just short losing by one at home to Gilbert and, and kind of a, a tough one to lose. Sounds like you guys really controlled maybe the first three quarters of that one. Hey, absolutely. Um, we looked really good for three quarters. Um, we just have to find a way to to put together a whole game and, and finish uh it was a heartbreaker. I'm really proud of our girls. We played, we had an, a tremendous first half. Um, so we're just going to learn from it. And, and the good news is we get to see Gilbert again. So hopefully we can get some payback. What went so well for you first half and in the third quarter? I think you said you had gotten up by 14 in the third. Yeah, we were Yeah, halfway through the third. We were up 14. We were feeling pretty good. Um, but to Gilbert's credit, they, they fought hard. They they played tough. Uh, their coach made some defensive adjustments. They switched to his own. And, um, like, typically that's, you know, something that we handle pretty well. But um, for some reason it gave us some trouble. We Our turnovers led to their points, and, and we couldn't finish. Uh, ended up losing by one. I uh, got a couple looks there in the final seconds, but couldn't finish, couldn't get a call. Um, so here we are. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Kate, you suffer you just your first shot loss of the year, so sitting two and one heading into your game next Tuesday against uh, North Polk here at home. But uh, uh, it sounds like Caitlin Aiden hit a big shot for you late to tie it. I think a three. Yeah, she. Yeah, we we did a good job moving the ball against their zone, and she wound up with an open three, nailed it to tie the game. Uh, Olivia Rowetter fouled out in the final. I think there was one minute left in the game, um, and Olivia fouled out. She played great. Uh, that kid is tough. She has a lot of grit. She plays really hard. Um, and so I, in the final minute, losing her is tough. But, um, yeah, they went up They went up one with a free throw there, and then uh, we didn't get another. Failed to get the last bucket there. I thought you guys rebounded well on Tuesday. How did you rebound on Friday? Um, at times we we rebounded well. I think, you know, when we get tired towards the end of the game, we lose that a little bit. But, um, I, I, like I told you the other night, <laughs> I'm never real happy. If we let them get one offensive rebound, I, I'm, I'm not happy. But... Um, so yeah, something we'll continue to work on. We actually went to a, a a zone tonight, which we don't typically do. We played, we were in a zone the whole game, uh, pretty much the whole game, and uh, it, we just got to. It's new, so we need to learn how to box out of out of it. Did you feel like the zone worked pretty well for you? You did hold them to forty nine points. I it was. It, it's intended to try and keep us out of some foul trouble. Um, we play a lot of teams that dribble, drive, and kick, um, and then that g- kind of gets us those ticky-tack fouls because we've got a little bit more size this year. Um, so, yeah, I, I think it worked well. It's just something that as, as a unit of coaches and players, we're going to have to figure out together because it's new. Um, but I'm excited about it. It looks good tonight. I think it threw him for a loop. It threw Gilbert for a loop for a little while. Um I think it was, you know, a big part of our, our, our lead there. 
Coach, let's bounce back to Tuesday. Uh, overtime win uh, against Kemper, the crosstown rival. Uh, that was a hard-fought game. I think you guys had the largest lead at one point at six or something like that. But uh, uh, just a terrific game. Uh, you guys find a way to come out at, on top at the end. As you went back, as I know you did, you watched the film that night and, and, and finished up the stats and then sent them off to us, and we appreciate you doing that all the time. But uh, what did you learn different maybe from watching the film that maybe as you're coaching uh, you get caught up talking to somebody or on the bench or something? What did you see differently? You know, with me, it's usually just the little things. And I it, like tonight, we lost by one point. So there's probably several little things that we could have done differently. Uh, set a better screen. Uh, don't give up on that one play. Make that box out. Uh, ball take there instead of just winging it across the court, you know, and, and that turnover. Uh, one point. Any one of those tiny little things could have been the difference. Um you know, the one point was last night, but you know, Kemper was, oh man, why is that always so close? I, <laughs> where do you sign up for those cupcakes early on in the season where you can try to get your act together? Oh. I, I'll sign up for that. No, it was a great game. And, and Kemper's very well coached. They've got some great players. Um, and I know the girls like to, they all know each other and their buds. They like to get on the court and compete. So it's, it's always a good one. Coach, uh, Tuesday night, uh, you guys get a host North Polk. As you and I were kind of talking, you guys are home a lot, it seems like, early this season, which is a good thing. You don't have to, to go on the road. Gives kind of a young team a chance maybe to grow. But I know North Polk last year was really, really good. I'm anticipating they're probably awfully good again this year. But uh, you guys seem to be playing really well here early on. Yeah, I'm, I'm proud of us. Um We've we've been we've showed some toughness and and we've showed a lot of growth since day one. Uh, so if we can just continue to get better every day, uh, and you know that's the only way to do it, one step at a time, uh, to be the strongest team we can be come February. Uh, North Polk will be good. They're very they're well coached. It's a solid program. Um, they've got a lot of girls that have played a lot of basketball. I think they'll be younger this year. Uh, I think they've got a six one center uh, and then they've got one of the best point guards uh, in our conference maybe in the state uh, I think she's she might be a junior uh, so yeah they'll be tough it'll be similar to tonight with with the style of play well coach as always we appreciate you joining us uh, sorry about the disappointing loss on Friday night but appreciate the time here today best of luck and okay see you'll see you guys Tuesday night against North Polk and then I get you Saturday next week against uh, Storm Lake all right, looking forward to it. Thanks, Jeff. You bet. Head coach Katie Cook again with the Carroll Girls basketball team. We'll be back. We're going to turn our focus over to Carroll Boys Swimming with head coach Deb Danner when we come back on the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show. Nothing says Merry Christmas like our Ladies' Day sale. How about 25% off the entire store at Wilkie Clothiers today through Sunday? Our way of saying thank you for your support this year. That's 25% off the entire store at Wilkie Clothiers today through Sunday. We're back here on the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show. Jeff Blank been talking right now with Deb Danner, of course. She is the boys swim coach up at Carroll High School and what a start to the season they've had here so far. Coach, appreciate you joining us here today. Yep, it's good to be here. You bet, Coach. You're pretty excited about this year. We'll talk about that coming up here in a moment. Uh, but uh, you guys started the season uh, with a pretty dominant performance up at Fort Dodge on a Tuesday night, took on both Spencer and, of course, Fort Dodge, and, and it really wasn't close in, in, in either one of those team duels. You guys kind of dominated that meet the way it looks overall. Yeah, we um, did. We took first in everything we did either <laughs> second or third in most events also um so yeah they they the boys it was their first meet they were excited to get out there and, and race and um that's exactly what they did they got out there and they raced and they had a great time and i got the sense in the email from you that night with the results that uh, really happy with the times for early in the season oh definitely yeah you know that's kind of what i'm looking at is is how are we going to start the season out, which will give me a pretty good indication how we'll finish the season out. So, yeah, UE had some really strong swims. Um, a lot of kids swimming pretty close to their personal best from last year. So uh, that is just great to see. And, and yeah, we, we're, we're just going to keep getting stronger throughout the season. And this uh, this group – 
pretty deep the way it sounds and, and, and really strong in a lot of different areas. War right now, early in the season, especially come out of that first meet, is it just every single race that's going to be really strong or do you feel like you're better in the, you know, the freestyles or the backstrokes or the best? Where's the depth at for you? No, I, I feel like we have a, a solid team from top to bottom. Every single event is going to be um, good races no matter where we go. I think we'll, we'll show up with some really good races. What stood out for you then, or did anybody really kind of – I know you always know how your kids are going to do. Did anybody exceed that for you on Tuesday night up at Fort Dodge? Well, you know, so I got a couple of new swimmers, well, a few new swimmers. Um, so wasn't real sure what they were going to do. Um, so like we have Landon Cadwell that, um, you know, he's from Denison, wasn't sure what he all had and, and kids, a strong little swimmer there. Um, you know, he, he's doing very well so far for us. So that was great to see. So I, it's like, great. I got another one right up there on the top. And, you know, that was just, that, that is a great thing to have a new swimmer coming in like that. You know, nice little surprises. Um, Jacob Graving is doing really good, um, swimming fairly close to his personal best. So, you know, that, that makes me feel good that, you know, we're you know, we're going to have a nice strong season with him. We have another new swimmer, um, Tegan Renzi, who, you know, I have known Tegan for a lot of years, and he's a strong swimmer, and, and I was very excited to have him on the team. So, yeah, you know, he threw out some really great times for us, so – um, you know, and just all the boys are doing great. Weston Toff has really stepped up this year from last year. So that's exciting. So, you know, we, we've added to our, our top tier swimmers. So that is uh, really nice to see. Coach, uh, I, I, with this team, I'm getting the sense you, there could be some new school records set with this group. Uh, definitely. Yes. <laughs> um, so we got we got a few of them that are looking to try and take records down early this season. So I hope they do it too. So um, yeah, we'll we'll have some records broken this year for sure. Any? Do you want to mention any particular events you think you might get, or do you want to keep that private until you know until it happens and keep the pressure off? Um, we're just gonna keep it to ourselves until we actually <laughs> have it happen. Um, yeah, no, no pressure on anybody to try and take a record down. Uh, pressure is always a killer, so um, yeah, we'll we'll just wait and see what happens. You guys are on the road again today over to Boone um, for their meet today. Uh, Going to be a pretty good field the way it sounds, but uh, I think you're pretty confident in what this team's capable of today. Yeah, what we saw at Fort Dodge makes me feel really good about this meet. Um, we're going to have some good competition for sure, but I, I feel like the boys, um, you know, they're really pumped. They're really excited after swimming up at Fort Dodge. And um, yeah, I think we're going to see some amazing times again. And this is one of those different meets, correct? With the, the way things are run, isn't everything uh, pairs or something, if I remember correctly? Yeah, it's, it's a relay meet. So every event is a relay. Um, so like the 200 freestyle First kid dives in, swims a 200 freestyle. Second kid does a relay exchange from that and swims a 200 freestyle. So, yeah, the the entire meet is set up that way. So, um, you know, they're, they're, every race, is, it depends on your partner how well you're going to do. So you're, you're counting on each other to do well. How hard is it for you, or is it pretty easy with this group to kind of go through and match everybody up pretty well? Um. It's never easy putting a meet together, um, <laughs> no matter what, even even with a strong field. It, it's, you know, trying to find the right combination and, you know, it, it, there's still a lot to it. So, no, it, it's not real easy, but it's easier than it has been in the past years, but it's still not easy. Well, Deb, I tell you what, it was fun typing up the story on Tuesday night. I'm pretty excited to see how things go over at uh, Boone here a little bit uh, later on today. So appreciate you joining us here today. Best of luck coming up in the uh, meet today. Thank you. Head coach Deb Danner again with the Carroll Boys Swim Team. We'll be back with more from the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show coming up right here on KCIM.
It's a red hot big baking sale going on this weekend at your Carol High V. Now through Sunday, High V sugar only two forty nine, High V flour a dollar ninety eight, and High V butter only two ninety eight with your Perks Plus card. Get all these baking deals and more this weekend only at your Carol High V. Andrew Clank, the head at Kemper uh, Girls Basketball Coach, is joining us here on this uh, Peach Ranch Coaches Show on this uh, Saturday morning. And Coach, appreciate your time here today. Hey, Jeff. Thanks. Appreciate your time, too. You bet. You guys will have your second game of the season coming up uh, later today. I'll be over there to broadcast that uh, again over at uh, Dennis and Slashwick later, Coach. But uh, you guys did start Tuesday night. Uh, went uptown to, to Carroll High there, just on the other side of town, the north part of town. Uh, and took on Carroll High Tuesday night. What a heck of a ball game. It goes to overtime. I know you ended up for you guys on the on the wrong end of it uh, with a 51-47 loss, but I could tell you were disappointed on Tuesday night. If you went back and watched the film, what would you kind of take away from it now? Yeah, yeah. Well, you're always disappointed when you end up on the wrong end. But, it yeah. was, you know, it was a good game. It was, it was a good yep. battle, uh, you know, between two – you know, very, very good teams. I, I wish Carroll the best, you know, this season. Uh, you know, I hope they are extremely successful. Um, you know, for our, for us on our side, you know, I, I look back not just on that last, you know, couple minutes of the fourth quarter or, you know, into overtime, but more or less the whole game. And, you know, for us, it's, it's little things here and there. It's, you know, not putting yourself in that situation where you are having to climb back out of a six or seven point deficit, you know, in the, I believe it was the what, second the second quarter, and you know it is just the, little, the little things um, that we've got to get better at to to make ourselves be in that position. If we want to be successful against good competition, against great competition, we've got to be able to fix those uh, throughout the game, and not just say, "Hey, fourth quarter, it is what it is. We got to do what we got to do." You mentioned though falling down by six or so, they were in that second quarter, but able to battle back had a lead late in regulation. So what did you learn about your team then from being able to fight through those early mistakes? That, that a basketball game is four quarters. And <laughs> we, uh, yeah, we, there's definitely, a, it's definitely a roller coaster. It always is. Um, you got to be able to, you know, maintain the highs and maintain the lows. Um, and it, it showed me a lot of, especially with some of our youth that came off the bench. Um, I thought Charlotte Hackford, you know, stepped up and played a big role for us. Yeah. Um, Kaylee Dirksen came in uh, when we got a little bit of foul trouble and, and helped us out tremendously, uh, you know, around the, around the hoop. And it's just, you know, being able to handle uh, that stuff is a growth aspect and not a, um, oh, man, you know, we lost the game. It's no, hey, what do we, how do we learn from that? How do we get better from that? Because, you know, I thought in game we did a pretty good job of handling that stuff. It was a, you know, a great environment, great atmosphere for a basketball game. You know, a lot of external things going on, and I just kept telling the girls, you know, only worry about what's going on on the court. Um, and they did a really good job of that. Um, we just, you know, came, comes back to those those details, those little things that we at times just missed out on, just didn't want to stay sharp on those things, and they came back and bit us at the end. How did you feel like defensively you guys played? They did get a couple of girls in double digits with Caitlin Aiden finishing with 11, and Olivia Rowetter a big game inside 16 and 11. I thought that was an interesting matchup with her and Franny. You know, I, what hurt us, I think, the most was our inability to take care of all five girls on the on the glass. Um, you know, they're they're very skilled in the fact that they, they get rebounds. Uh, we gave up 21 offensive rebounds. That, that's going to kill you. Um, anytime you give a team 21 second chance opportunities to score. Um, and I think that's not just on one girl, it's on all five of us. And that's something we focused on this week was being, you know, better in, on the glass. Um, not necessarily um, on the offensive side, but defensive, taking away second chance opportunities uh, for other teams. So, you know, I, I feel like we were in great spots. Um, we just were not, we're not being strong with the ball. And so we really worked on, you know, when we get a board, we need to be strong with it, take care of it, don't turn it over. Um, you know, if we get our hand on it, that, that ball has to be ours. Coach, I get the sense at first game everybody struggles to shoot a little bit, but uh, I got the sense offensively that night you guys were able to get some looks, but girls that I think will shoot better throughout the season struggled a little bit for you the other night. Yeah, you know, honestly from the perimeter, I, I, I think we were, you know, just under – well, right around 40% um, from three. Um, every look that we got was a great look. I, 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 we talk about getting great looks versus good looks versus bad looks. And, you know, we had inside out uh, ball rotation, kick out, extra pass threes. That, I mean, when you, when you shoot that well from the perimeter, that's great. Um, 
we got to be better around the rim. We got to finish strong. Uh, you know, we had some soft takes, some balls that you know we didn't really have a great handle on when we went to the rim. Um, and we got to get better at that. You know, we're getting the shots that we wanted that we want to take. It's just you know making them at a higher volume. And you know, it just comes down to being confident and trusting what you're doing. Um, we've worked a lot on that, you know, through the off season and into the first couple weeks of the season. What was the difference, do you think, in the overtime for the Tigers? They were able to outscore you guys six to two. And where do you need to improve, maybe, in in those situations? Um, you know, I would probably say that for us, it was. Being in that situation, um, you know, we haven't really had that many overtime games uh, with any of the girls that are returning. We haven't had many of those situations. Um, I think from a coaching perspective, um, I've got to rep that more in practice, more situational stuff to understand, like, hey, here is, you know, here's what we've got. We've got this much time on the clock. You know, we're playing with the lead. We're playing without a lead, um, no matter what it is. And, you know, I think a lot of it boiled down to, uh, they made a couple of buckets. We missed a couple of really good looks, and you know that's that's the difference. Um, you know, I would say from a just a X's and O's standpoint from the girls, they they did exactly what we wanted to do. Um, kudos to Carol. They they executed and got some great looks from girls that had been making shots down the stretch um, between Rowetter and Cook and um, and and Aiden. Um, you know, it was exactly what they wanted to do, and they made them. Uh, that was the difference. I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of points scored in the overtime, but, you know, six points to two points, it's a four-point differential in their favor. Well, Coach, uh, appreciate you joining us here this morning. Looking forward to catching up with you and getting to see you play a conference team and a non-conference game over at Denison Schleswig a little bit later on this afternoon. So thanks for joining us here today. Catch up with you later today. All right. Thanks, Jeff. I appreciate it. You met head coach Andrew Clank again with the uh, Kemper Girls Up basketball team back with more from the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show here on KCIM. Dries Company, a family-owned electrical and mechanical contractor, is in search of experienced plumbers or plumbing apprentices for service and commercial work. These are full-time positions with excellent benefits, providing exciting opportunities for career growth, advancement, and stability. If you are motivated, driven, have outstanding work ethic, and safe work practices, this is the perfect opportunity for you. Please apply online at driesco.com or email your resume to service at driesco.com. Dries Company, celebrating 90 years in business. Pizza Ranch Coaches Show rolling on here on this uh, Saturday morning. Jeff Blankman uh, joined right now by Eric Noggle, the head boys wrestling coach with the Carroll Tigers. And, Coach, congratulations. Outstanding uh, start to the season, and thanks for joining us here today. Thank you. Thanks for having me. You bet, Coach. Uh, you guys uh, got things underway Thursday night, went over to Boone for a triangular. We'll talk about the matchup with Boone in, in just a moment. But uh, dominant win against number 8 Webster City, a team you guys saw in the dual state tournaments last year trying to get down to the dual state tournament. But uh, um, what a win, uh, winning at 52-30 to 30 and winning almost every single match by fall. Yeah, it was, it was a big win for us. Um, I think we wrestled Webster City last year as well for – um, regional duels with, um, I think, Hampton, Hampton-Dumont, when we wrestled against them. We yep. would have got Webster City in there. The last couple of years, they've they've kind of caught us and beat us in some situations, but, it, you know, it was nice to come through and get a little revenge on them in the opening part of the year. You never know how it's going to go, but I thought our kids wrestled really, really well, really, really hard, and um, kind of just got after it right away. So that's a good good, good start to the year. Coach, uh, not a great start as far as how that one went. You lost four of the first five matches, but then you, you strung together six straight wins. What turned it at 132 pounds with Levi Dirks? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're lighter weights are in there and, and, and pretty good, and we just kind of struggled a little bit. And it was kind of pin or be pin, but, you know, Levi came out and kind of stopped the ball, you know, stopped the snowball effect, which we always need to kind of have. But, you know, Levi's a, a veteran wrestler and has wrestled with us for, you know, wrestled for us for the last couple of years. And, you know, he just did his part. And, you know, it's good to see him back after having ACL surgery and, and, and coming back off of that and, and, and doing what he needed to do. But he, he took the responsibility of it and kind of just, like I said, stopped that snowball effect. Did it kind of snowball for you guys then? You went out, like I said, and won five straight matches after Levi, uh, and most of them in pretty dominant fashion. Uh, you had uh, three first-period pins, uh, then one late from Owen Clucky uh, with 12 seconds left, and then Chase Regaler gets a pin uh, midway through the, the second period. But uh, um, those guys that, that followed up Levi must have taken that energy and went right out on the mat. 
Yeah, I mean, we we did. We called it a snowball effect on our side as well. You know, for us to come out and and get that move in, you know, we, we we're going to rely on that this year in the middle of our lineup. I mean, you get through 132 to about 192, 15, even heavyweight. You know, in those situations, we got veteran guys that are in there and can do their job and do their part, and we're going to have to live off that and. You know, those guys can go out and pin. I don't like having to rely on that we have to get falls or that we have to get pins. But, you know, in those situations, you got to kind of make it back up. It's kind of like the old basketball theory, you know. Every time they get the ball or you score, you got to come back and score back with them and you kind of match those points up. So that's, it was a good thing by our guys to kind of have that mentality to do that. How is Owen Clucky able to get that fall with 12 seconds left? Um, I can't, I can't even remember. There were so many things that went on with that, but. <laughs> Owen's just a grinder, you know. He just holds things on, and and just he's just a workman like I don't know. It's, I call it workman like um, experience for him. He's you know takes his lunchbox to work and, and and just hammers away, and and he's never really out of it. Even when he things aren't going his way, he somehow finds a way, and he just continues to grind it out. And and you know that was that was a huge win for him, and a huge huge turn swing for us to kind of get that ball back in our favor. Coach, and you guys uh, took on Boone last night. Pretty convincing win there as well. 54-21. What stood out for you about the win over Boone? Uh, Boone was just kind of a steady thing. Again, it was those lighter weights coming in. And, you know, Jake Kincaid kind of set us off really, really well. You know, we started off at heavyweight with Jason Avalez his first year wrestling. And, you know, what if we started, no, not even that one. It was 215. I'm getting confused. 215, we took the forfeit. And then Jason got a big win for us. And then you know, come through, and, and like I said, Jake Kincaid had a good match against Webster City in there, but it just kind of kind of got it going, and then, again, back in Levi's hands, you know, you get Levi in that win, and, and then Kale takes over, and Cooper rolls in, then you get into Clucky, and then you get into Regaler, and once we got that ball on our side, you know, it, it turned into, again, that snowball effect that we could, we could just kind of run with it, and Boone Boone took Webster City thirty six or lost thirty six to thirty. So they're 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 young and they lost like three seniors two days ago. So I expect a lot of good things out of them. And Ryan does a great job and always has them prepared, you know. But it's early in the year, so you know you take it take it with a grain of salt. You want to do as well as you possibly can, but you know sometimes it just happens. And and Boone's a, Boone's a heck of a team. So could you have thought of a better way to get the season started than those two wins Tuesday? No. <laughs> you know me, not a chance, man. I just want to just want our guys to go out and compete and wrestle hard and you know, we know what we got in the room and we talked about it as coaches. It's really, really hard to kind of um regulate or kind of how do I want to say, it, you know, kind of look at where you're at because our guys have been wrestling each other for so long that it looks it looks effortless at times in practice. So you never really know how hard it's how hard it's going or how, how well it's working and things like that. But our guys do a good job and just come in and 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 like i said afterwards we got the target on our back just got bigger you know we you can't walk away beating the number eight team pretty good and 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 not expect people to open up their eyes and say well here's carol again you know so the target got bigger and we're going to embrace that target which is going to force us to work harder and that's all we're going to do is go out and work as hard as we possibly can and put our best best foot forward and and try to put a show on and and, and give her as the best thing we can. And you got a big matchups, I'm sure, today over at the DCG tournament. Uh, what are you looking at there? Oh, man, yeah, that's going to be a good one. 13 teams. You got Dallas Center Grimes, Creston, you know, they're in there. We'll see them like four times this year. And they're, they're, they're loaded for Bear, you know, but um, who else? You got Adel in there, who's a conference team. Um, Johnston's in there tonight, today. It's, it's, it's going to be a bear fight, but again, it's that first tournament of the year. We're going to go in, like I said, and give it our best shot and see what happens and learn from it and build from it. And it's a long way till February. You know, you're looking at it as we're just hitting December, you know, December 2nd. So <laughs> we, we got some time to do and we're just going to go out there and, and wrestle as hard as we can every time we're at Dallas Center Grimes. And hopefully we can learn some things and, and come out pretty healthy. Well, Coach, as always, we enjoy talking to you. Congratulations again on the win uh, Thursday night, and uh, best of luck coming up today. I appreciate it, Jeff, and as always, go Tigers. Head coach uh, again, Eric Nago with the uh, Carroll Tiger Boys wrestling team back with a more from the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show right here on KCIM. Listen Monday mornings and afternoons for the IKM Manning Minute. We'll be talking to the students about what they're doing and learning every week. The IKM Manning Minute, proudly brought to you by Next Gen Ag Supply in Templeton. 
Tracy Hoffman, the girls wrestling coach with the Cameronites, joining us here on this Saturday morning as they're headed down to Audubon for a tournament coming up a little bit later on this morning. But the, the Knights were in action earlier this week on Thursday. Uh, they headed down to an invite to down at Trainer uh, and finished extremely well. Just four wrestlers going down. But, Coach, you guys finished in sixth place with 43 points and three girls out of your four uh, finish in the top three. Thanks for joining us here today, first of all. But had to be really happy uh, with how things went uh, on Thursday evening. Yes, we were all really excited about the results on Thursday. What was kind of the, the mentality and the game plan going down, knowing you just had four girls going along? So what was the thought process? What did you want to see? Um, we just wanted everybody to go out and give it their all, and all the girls did that. Who stood out for you the most? I'm sure Grace probably picking up uh, a couple of wins by fall to take first place for you at 110 pounds. But let's start with her then. Uh, what, what stood out for you about the way she wrestled? Um, she was really after it that night. Um, she was trying different moves and wasn't afraid to take shots or do anything. She just really went in there and hammered on them. Her first match against a girl she may see quite a bit this year, a conference foe out of Clarinda in uh, Cambry Gordon. Uh, got the fall uh, about late in that uh, second period. What, what did she do to be able to come up with the fall in that uh, late part of that second period? Um, so we faced this girl last year um, in the finals down at Stewart, and she went all three rounds with her, and it was a pretty tough match. This time she just was, you know, she tried something. If it didn't work, she switched to a new move, and she just got her. Just Was she able to just get in with both legs, or was it a single leg, or how did she get her down? Do you remember? Um, no, I don't remember exactly how she took her down <laughs> that time. I think I think she actually had the ankle pick on that one. Okay. So. Yeah, lots of matches Something to try and remember. Tried. Yeah, lots of matches to try yeah. and remember. So dominated her second matchup last night, winning in 47 seconds. I'm, I'm guessing uh, that she just got right in right away and took her down quickly. Yeah, um, that girl pretty much had one move that she liked to do, and we saw that when she was wrestling the Clorinda girl. So we knew what she was going to go for, and we blocked that on the defense, and she got in on the shot and just got her. Kyra Walterman also having an outstanding night for you. Finished in second place at 135 pounds. Uh, finished up her night going 3-1. Uh, and one. Uh, Again, a w some wins over a conference of foe uh, and, and stuff. But what stood out for you about the way Kyra hit the mat and wrestled? So she came in really aggressive on the night, which that's awesome to see. And um, a big thing with her, she was good that even when other girls came in on the shot and stuff, Kyra was good at scooting her hips and, you know, trying to get around her. She never gave up. She always was giving it our, her all. Ended up winning her first two matches. Uh, I know got pinned in the in late in the, the second period in that championship match against a wrestler, uh, Brooklyn Lang from Missouri Valley. But uh, how close was that? Did she have some chances maybe earlier than that to pick up a win there? Yeah, we kind of had a hiccup on that one with the clock situation. I don't, according to our thing, the clock didn't get started on time, but we'll just let that go. But she was, um, you know, in the lead there for a while, but it ended up being that they went almost three minutes the first period instead of two. So I think we kind of got worn out on that. And then we just got caught in the second period. Okay, uh, but able to bounce back again, got a no contest win uh, for that to second place finish. I, I got a sense with Kyra having battled so many entries earlier in her career, pretty happy with the way she started. Oh, yes, definitely. And she, you know, with her and Grace both, they're seniors this year, and they have goals and they want to get there, so... Sadie Smith brought home a third-place finish for you. Um, ended up losing her opening match, but uh, came back to win uh, her last three matches of the night. Uh, what, what did you see from her uh, with her mentality and, and what, what could help her in the future of losing that first match but to be able to come back and win three straight? Um, so her first match, we kind of watched a little bit. She, we finally got her taking shots. She was never one to take shots, and last night she was hitting her shots pretty good. Um, the first match, we were just kind of dumping them the wrong way, and once we told her which way to go, um, she just came after them, and, yeah, she was hammering them last night, too, so that was pretty awesome. And uh, Kyla Wiskus, your last wrestler, uh, did pick up uh, one win by fall. Uh, got that one in the first period. How's Kyla growing this season as a wrestler? 
So we were pretty pumped for her last night. That was her first win this season. So that was a huge thing. Um, she, Her girl, she was able, we kept watching her, and she's getting really good at winging down and flipping them over, and that's how we kind of got that last girl, got her pinned down there. Coach, you guys, as I mentioned, are back in action coming up today. You're headed down uh, to the tournament down in Audubon. I think all of my area girls wrestling teams are going to be down there. I'll be down for a while this morning to catch up and see how things are going. But what's the mindset coming off of Thursday night? What are you girls? What are you and the girls looking for today? Well, we are looking for more pins and wins, but uh, we have we all know that we have tough brackets today, so. We're just going to have to go in there with good mindsets and take our shots and make sure we're finishing them. Well, Tracy, we appreciate you joining us. I know it's a busy day for you, so we wish you the best a lot coming up later this morning. Again, I'll see you down there in Audubon a little bit later this morning, and thanks for joining us here today. Okay, thanks, Jeff. You bet. Head Coach Tracy Hoffman again with the uh, Kemper Girls Wrestling Program. We're back with more from the MC Country Cafe Coaches Show right here on KCIM. Brings Exteriors is holding their annual toy drive and open house on Friday, December 8th from 9 a.m. to noon. Drop off a new unwrapped toy before 4 p.m. on the 8th and be entered to win a basket filled with local goodies. Brings Exteriors, 301 Griffith Road on the east edge of Carroll. We're back here at the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show on this Saturday morning. Samantha Vanami, the head girls wrestling coach, joining us as they're headed down to Audubon for a tournament getting underway at 10 o'clock this morning. Coaches, always appreciate your time. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. You bet, Coach. A good start to the season. You guys actually got started before the Thanksgiving holiday, but we're back in action on Monday as you guys went over to Denison Slash Week, took on, of course, the Monarchs along with Audubon in a triangular. Uh, came out of there at 2-1 and one on the night. I think Ridgeview was the other team that was there. Um, how did, or Hinton, excuse me, how did you feel like you guys wrestled on, on Monday? Because it looks like, according to the results, you wrestled well. We did. I think uh, every week we get a little bit better. Um, the confidence is growing a lot in the girls that are new this year and the leadership that I have for some of my seniors has really helped and improved. Um, taking some of the new girls um, aside and they're giving them instructions or little hints that have, they have learned from last year and overall just as a team that's helping, I think we're right where we need to be. I think they wrestled strong. Um, and I think a lot of the nerves that they had when we were at Ames and even Nevada, I think a lot of those are kind of gone now because it's just they understand that it's just go time and not to let it, um, you know, rattle them too much, just to keep moving forward. And ultimately, that's all I can ask from them. You had a couple of girls in Julia Canny and Chloe Jones go 3-0, and all with matches that they wrestled and picked up wins. Avery Burke also 3-0 and with a couple of those by fall and then a forfeit win. Uh, you had uh, Brianna Kiger picked up uh, a win, a couple of wins for you as well. Emma Daniels also uh, got a win for you. So what stood out for you about the performance? So was it just the aggressiveness of the girls, how they wrestled, the smartness that they used out on the mats, or, or, or what kind of stood out for you? Um, I've been preaching a lot this year just about communication um, uh, as far as <clears throat> that's what's going to help them in their future, even leaving wrestling, leaving high school. is You need to communicate and you need to tell people what it is that you need help with and what you want out of your career to include wrestling. So if we are not covering something that you do not feel confident about, you need to let me know that and we'll make it happen. And They've been doing a really good job of, you know, doing the drills and listening and then bringing to my attention, like, hey, I'm, I want to know how we get out of this. And we focus on that and we practice and we drill it until they get comfortable enough because I want them to feel confident and successful when they're on that map. And um, just everyone this year has been very coachable and that matters a ton. And that you could tell that they're in it and they want to be there and they want to be successful and they want to learn and honestly coachable kids is all a person can ask for and I've got some of the best around. Julia Cannon, one of those coach, comes into the season ranked, kind of living up to that billing here early in the season. She, yes, she was super excited. Obviously she got eighth in her ranking um, and she's just a beast. She puts her head down and she gets to work and she takes the time as well to, <clears throat> excuse me, get 
get to business and help others. Um, been extremely grateful for her this year. Um, she's been kind of taking Alexis under her wing and showing her uh, just what's helped her, What because they're both smaller, they're both quick on their feet, and I can see the improvement on Alexis and just the mentorship that she's got and has provided, uh, Julie has provided, is just um, makes me proud. You mentioned Alexis. I was just going to ask you who are some other girls that maybe are new to the sport that, uh, you know, are new to the team this year that that have stood out for you here early. So Alexis, yes, yeah, she's my 100-pound. Um, she's she's hardworking. She's, you know, she knows she's the tiniest one on the team and actually having to tell her to, I need you to bulk up a little bit and giving her goals to gain some weight, um, which is a problem, by gosh, that we would all love to have. But she takes it in stride and she doesn't give up. She asks really great questions. She doesn't get frustrated and, you know, rightfully so she could, but she's, she wants to learn. And like I said earlier, we've gone every meet that we attend, we get a little bit better and a little bit better. And she went from, you know, the very first time she wrestled getting pinned early on to being at Denison and she went all three rounds and, did some damage on her own, just continuously getting out and not getting pinned and not getting pinned. And, you know, by the end, she was celebrating, I think, even harder than the Denison girl because she's like, <laughs> did you see how long I went? I said, yeah, you did amazing. And I would say the same thing about Ava Mankin. She, uh, you know, every meet she's getting a little bit better and a little bit better. And there's just a couple of things that I had told her, had you done this different, you probably would have had that pin. But other than that, again, she went further than she'd ever gone before. And she's really great at just looking up and listening and taking in all the advice. And she's not too hard on herself. She understands that she's improving, you know, one meet at a time. And if I would have a Reese Heller too, she's not another new one for me. She's the exact same way. Didn't know anything about wrestling. Wanted to give it a try. And each meet she's getting a little bit better. She's understanding, um, you know, just what it's all about, and I appreciate that she just continues sticking with it and asking the questions to get, become a better wrestler. Coach, you guys are down in Audubon this morning. I know you'd love to come out of there probably with a team win and a bunch of individual titles, but uh, what are you hoping to see out of the girls today? I hope that everyone just gives it their all. Um, there's going to be a few teams there like Denison and Audubon and Perry that we've already wrestled before, so we kind of know what to expect with them. Um, a lot of teams that we have not wrestled yet, but that's all right. Um, you know, this will be our second Saturday tournament, and they know what to expect as far as needing to um, basically go all day and not get tired out and how to pace themselves. And uh, I just want them to take what we've been practicing and drilling this week and just put it on the mat today and be successful and hopefully – walk away feeling a little bit more confident well coach as always it's fun to catch up with you i'll see you down there a little bit later on this morning best of luck coming up thank you so much head coach samantha vanami again with the carol girls wrestling team we'll be back with more coming up from kcim right here on the pizza ranch coaches show here at Manning Regional Healthcare Center, we offer our patients convenient care close to home. To better meet your healthcare needs, our clinic offers extended hours into the early evening during the week and Saturday morning hours to accommodate busy schedules. We also offer same-day appointments for minor injuries or illnesses for when you or your family need it most. If you're not feeling well, call 712-655-8100 to schedule an appointment at MRHC. We trusted experts close to home. Pizza Ranch Coaches Show rolling on on this Saturday morning here on KCIM. Let's talk a little Kemper boys basketball right now with head coach Sean Minahan. And coach, always good to catch up with you. How you doing on this Saturday? Uh, doing well. You know, had a good week of practice after, you know, bouncing back from the game. And guys have come out and been focused, so it's, uh, looking forward to the game this afternoon. You guys mentioned bouncing back. We'll talk about that Carroll High game, the thriller that went to overtime here in just a moment, but another game coming up today. Pretty good days of practice after that game Tuesday coming into today's game at Denison? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I felt like our energy was really, really good on Wednesday coming in. 
um, our guys, you know, it could have been easy to be, you know, down and disappointed, but our they were ready to go and they knew we had we have work to be done because our goals were a lot bigger than just one game. Let's bounce back to Tuesday night then, as it sounds like the guys bounced back pretty well. Um, as I mentioned, uh, it goes to overtime. It was a great basketball game. Uh, I don't think either team deserved to lose in that one. It was just one of those you hated to see either team lose. But uh, you guys do end up falling as Evan Hammer banks one in at the buzzer there in overtime to, to nip you 56-55. Both teams had chances. Uh, they just came up with a final chance. Coach, uh, let's start with that uh, overtime in the last few minutes. You guys got down and then came back when uh, Carson Candy tipped the ball to, to Brock Bading. Uh, you make a stop after getting up. Uh, uh, and then you have the turnover and gives Carroll High another possession. But how did you see that game as you went back? You even said you watched your film late that night. What did you see, and how did you feel like that overtime played out? Um, you know, just didn't like the way the game started um, from a defensive standpoint. Offensively, I thought we got some really good looks that just didn't go down. Um, <clears throat> uh, we're, we're running some new offensive stuff, and I thought we – actually got some pretty good looks out of it um but when the shots didn't go i think we kind of got away from it too quickly um and and still not still not quite there from a trust standpoint um but i thought our guys really picked it up defensively the last three quarters and even even into overtime i thought our defense was really really tough um you know we rebounded pretty well with the exception of that one stretch in the fourth quarter midway through the fourth quarter um, that they just had to, it felt like a three minute possession. I, I, I think it was at least a minute and a half for sure, um, yeah. of actual game time that they were down there. But, um, I thought our guys really just kept competing. Um, I love the way they made plays, um, you know, when we needed to. Uh, I would have liked a little better shot selection there at the very end of, in overtime. And I would have, you know, ideally ran a different play, um, out of bounds where on that baseline, um, Carter popped. Carter Putney popped out, and he said his arm got grabbed, which prevented him from catching the ball. It, it didn't get called, so, uh, you know, it's one of those things that is what it is. And um, I thought even defensively, I thought we had a really good defensive possession. Um, you know, they were trying to get the ball into Evan, and our guys were really focused on taking that away. Ball ricochets out of bounds. Um, you know, we had a pretty good feeling of what they were running from a baseline standpoint. I thought our guys started it really well. Um, we just don't have the size to match up with Evan um, on the inbound pass, and he just kind of throw it up for him to catch it. And then he just he made a he made a tough shot. And and I I, I mean I, if it, if it wasn't against my team, I'd be really happy for the kid because um, I've I've enjoyed watching him develop the last few years. He's a good kid. Yeah. Um, and you know he worked hard for that moment, and he delivered. Coach, uh, you guys had to battle back there, though, in the fourth and able to do it. Michael Kaspabauer tied things up and eventually set the, sent the game to overtime. Uh, what stood out for you uh, about what you saw from your kids in the fourth quarter having a rally? Um, you know, toughness, grit. Uh, you know, just, you, know what, you, you can say all those cliche words, but the biggest thing is our guys just kept believing in each other, um, and they knew that they were going to put themselves in that right position. and and they believed in each other, and then they, just, they asked the guys to have each other's back, and then they really, really did. Um, there there was not a single point where they got frustrated with each other. If somebody missed a shot, they, they weren't mad at them for shooting the shot. They were like, hey, you're good, next shot. And, and uh, the biggest thing is, you know, they kept rallying around each other, so I'm excited about that. How big was DJ follow, fouling out there in the overtime? <laughs> well... So I'm really not happy about it. The more I watched on game film, because I don't know, if, I don't believe it was a foul, but it got called. So um, that was a big moment. Um, uh, you know, we Michael Kaspar had kind of received a he got taken out by two guys on a, and on a shot earlier in the game, and there was no foul. Um, pretty much the exact same situation. So I wasn't too happy about that. But um, I was really proud of the way um, DJ competed his butt off that entire game uh he uh was an emotional leader for us um he's really done that really good job of that this past week and a half uh, he's really brought the emotion to our and the energy to our practice and he was really encouraging our guys even after he was fouled out he, he continued to cur- encourage our players you know he's a he's a great kid and a great leader and you know our, our guys really responded even without him out that was it was hard, it's hard to have him go out but at the same time at some point we're going to be there and we still continue to do really good things defensively. Still got good looks offensively without him out. So that's exciting for, you know, down the road as well.
back in action again this afternoon. I'll be over there to broadcast on Kick 106.7. You guys got Dennis and Schleswig. I think they're missing the, the Weavers kid <laughs> right now. But uh, non-conference he matchup. Came, he's back. He was he back, back on uh, Sunday birthday. Okay. Okay. Thursday night. Weavers. He had 23 points. So okay. uh, He did miss Let's the first this. game, but he had 23 in their game on Thursday. So okay. he, he's back and playing well. He hit some deep well, let's check out our weekend well, birthday and anniversary them, list here on KCIM. Back. And again, uh, celebrating birthdays very, very today athletic. on this Saturday, December the 2nd is Hayden Hunziker of Carroll, turning nine years old today. Um, Also, uh, uh, Logan Rose of Dedham, happy 14th birthday today. Mary Brow of Carroll, happy birthday to you. And also, Um, Ronna Davis of Coon Rapids, celebrating a birthday today. Sunday birthdays, they include Lillian Um, King of Coon Rapids, turning three years old. Um, Also, uh, Kaylee Kramer of Carroll, 19. Evan Putins of Ralston, teenager today at 13 um, year, or Sunday on Sunday rather 13 year, for Evan Pudens. Uh, Alicia Wolf of Lanesboro turns 45 tomorrow. Trace Spoboda so of Auburn. Right now, happy 14th birthday on Sunday. Luke, also wishing um, a happy birthday kind of on Sunday to uh, Marissa Rothmeyer of um, Carroll. Kevin Lichty of um, Arcadia. Uh, Scott Mashey nice celebrating his birthday on Sunday as well. So happy birthday Scott. And Denise Higgins of Carroll. Also on the Sunday sure. birthday list. Well, Coach, that's we it. wish you the best. No anniversaries either Saturday or Sunday for you, but that is your weekend birthday and anniversary list here on morning. KCIM. Absolutely. Thank you. You bet. Head coach uh, Sean Minahan again with the Kemper Boys basketball team will be back with a more. We'll wrap things up coming up right next on the Pizza Ranch Coaches Show. Here at Pizza Ranch, we love our basketball. Just like you love everyone's favorite buffet. Hot fresh pizza, the country's best chicken, fresh cool salad bar, and dessert options that are so good, it's like sinking the winning shot at the buzzer. Pizza Ranch is a perfect meal option every day of the week. And to make it even sweeter, we have extended hours every Friday, Saturday, and Sunday from 11 a.m. to 8 p.m. Whoa, that's good. Pizza Ranch, located just off Highway 30 in Carroll, open seven days a week. Back to wrap up our uh, Pizza Ranch Coaches Show on this Saturday morning. Certainly, I want to thank Randy Beeson, Shane Vaughn, Katie Cook, Deb Danner, Andrew Klink, Eric Noggle, Tracy Hoffman, Shane, uh, Sam Vanami, and also uh, Sean Minhan for joining us on this Saturday morning. Uh, thank you as well for tuning in. And again, we'll have and we'll have several more of our Pizza Ranch Coaches Show coming up through the month of December. Here, talking to those coaches each and every week. Don't forget as well our uh, Player of the Game uh, pictures are up on the CB Sports Network Facebook page, Twitter page, and Instagram page, as well as on sportsnow1380kcim.com. Audio broadcast of the Esac County at South Central Calhoun and the Peyton Chardin Glidden Ralston doubleheaders are available on the website as well. We'll get uh, game recaps and stories up uh, from all of last night's basketball and the Kemper wrestling is available already at sports.1380kcim.com on the Brinks Exterior Sports Reports and uh, today's a local sports uh, wrestling and uh, boys swimming along with basketball we'll get those typed up coming up later tonight and tomorrow and get those available for you as well at sports now 1380 kcim.com on the brinks exterior sports report they're also available on the cb sports network facebook page and twitter speaking of today's schedule in basketball kemper heads to dennis and slushwig i'll have that double header for you on kick 106.7 coverage going to get in away at around at 2 15 2 o'clock 2 15 this afternoon Lots of wrestling going on today. All of our girls wrestling teams, South Central Calhoun, Carroll, uh, Esac County, and Kemper, along with Audubon, all down at the Audubon Girls Invite. That'll start at 10 this morning. South Central Calhoun and Esac boys teams go to Manson Northwest Webster's tournament today at 10 o'clock. Audubon boys head to the Harlan tournament beginning at 10 o'clock. Carroll boys are down at the Dallas Center Grimes tournament beginning at 10 o'clock. And Coon Rapids Baird boys head to Woodward at Granger's tournament today, also beginning at 10 o'clock. And the Carroll boys swim team, they're at the Boone invite today that also gets underway at 10 o'clock this morning thanks for tuning in again here to the pizza ranch coaches show have a great night and a great weekend everybody